tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News. Good afternoon to you. Bill Bryan and Barbara Bailey here for WKYT. As the news continues at 12.30, tributes continue today for a police officer who died in the line of duty. Nicholasville police officer Burke Rhodes died in a crash on U.S. 27 in Garrett County yesterday morning. He was on duty and headed to training in Richmond when he died. WKYT's Sam Smith is in Nicholasville to show us how he's being remembered in our top story at 12.30. Sam? The community here is still mourning the loss of Officer Burke Rhodes. Black and blue wreaths are on the police department and city hall, and the flag is at half staff. Officer Rhodes was on his way to training in Richmond yesterday morning when he was involved in a three vehicle accident in Garrett County. His death has hit this community hard. The police department is mourning the loss. While they're hurting, other agencies are helping with calls. An officer is standing guard at the funeral home, so Officer Rhodes will never be alone. Tonight, there will be a vigil at City Hall by the flagpole so the community can come out to show their respect for Officer Rhodes. Jay's Place, a coffee shop in town, is offering free drinks to Nicholasville police officers today. Officer Rhodes is a man that will be missed. It's a tragic loss for our community. Um, this is a pretty tight-knit community. And our police force and our sheriff's department and our fire department are very well respected in our community. They know a lot of people. They're involved in our community more than just their jobs. This is the first line of duty death for Nicholasville police since 1941. In Nicholasville, Sam Smith, WKYT. Sam, thank you. Funeral arrangements for Officer Rhodes have not been announced yet. Well, a man is in jail this afternoon accused of stealing five barrels of bourbon. The Franklin County Sheriff's Office says deputies arrested Gilbert Kurtzinger yesterday. They say he stole the bourbon from Wild Turkey Distillery in Anderson County, though he works at Buffalo Trace Distillery in Franklin County. We're told there is also a second suspect who works at Wild Turkey. The suspect right now works at another distillery um, here in town locally. Uh, there's another suspect that, that very well may be, uh, as I said, this thing is developing very rapidly. Uh, there is another suspect. Uh, we expect this to develop further as we go into this throughout the, the course of the next several days. The sheriff says each stolen barrel is worth between $3,700 and $6,000. Right now, investigators can't say if this is connected to the theft of rare Pappy Van Winkle from Buffalo Trace back in 2013. Well, police say the two burglars used a false identity to commit a home invasion early today. It happened at Shelato Park Apartments in Lexington very early today. Police say the men claimed to be Drug Enforcement Administration agents before forcing their way inside. They then tied up two people inside with zip ties and took off with a stolen shotgun and cash. At about 3 o'clock in the morning, um, a lot of banging, a lot of shouting, uh, windows breaking, um, just a lot of chaos. And when I looked out, I saw blinds on the ground and a gutter torn off the side and just a, you, something you couldn't ignore. So I called the police. And police searched for three and a half hours before bringing two people in for questioning. So far, they have not been charged. A woman is dead in an overnight house fire. The fire started around 2 this morning off U.S. 23 in the Lomansville community of Johnson County. The victim has been identified as 49-year-old Alina Moore. The coroner says she has a 14-year-old son, but he stayed somewhere else last night. Two people face charges in a double shooting, and one of them is the victim. Pamela Newcomb and Eddie Eversole were shot inside a home in Laurel County on March 2nd. According to court documents, Eversole and Caleb McKitty went to the home for a robbery. Police say it turned into a gunfight, and that's how Eversole and Newcomb were shot. Eversole and McKitty are charged with attempted murder and robbery. McKitty is in jail, but Eversole, along with Newcomb, remains at UK Hospital. Well, the Roman Catholic Diocese of Lexington has a new bishop. Pope Francis appointed Father John Stowe of Ohio to the post. The spot was left vacant when the Pope appointed Bishop Ronald Gaynor as Bishop of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. WKYT's Hillary Thornton has more on the new bishop. 
Early this morning, around noontime in Rome, Pope Francis appointed Father John Stowe as the third bishop of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Lexington. The Lexington Diocese, which is made up of 50 counties in eastern and central Kentucky, was left vacant when the Pope appointed Bishop Ronald Gaynor as the Bishop of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania last year. Bishop Alex Stowe was born in Ohio. He went on to earn his Master's of Divinity from the Jesuit School of Theology at Berkeley. He was ordained into priesthood in 1995 and most recently served in Cary, Ohio. Those at the announcement say today is not only special for the Catholic Church, but for the entire community. Very amazing to be here uh, and to know that Pope Francis has brought a friar to be the next Bishop of Lexington is a testament to what Pope Francis has been saying all along. We need to be a, ch a church for the poor, a church for the weekend, a church for the ill, the disadvantaged members of our community. The ordination and installation of Bishop-elect Stowe is planned for Tuesday, May 5th, and will likely take place at Christ the King. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. And Bishop-elect Stowe says his focus will be on worship and service. Father Stowe speaks Spanish, and he says he is looking forward to working with what he says is a large Hispanic Catholic population in this area. Police need your help to find a man suspected of cashing stolen checks. This is surveillance picture. This is a surveillance picture of the man state police are looking for. They say the checks were cashed in Madison and Rock Castle counties on January 5th. They totaled more than $3,000. We're trying Tracking an investigation now, a search for a man who's wanted in a stabbing. Williamsburg police say Melvin Hill got in an argument with a man over the weekend and then stabbed him in the chest with a large hunting knife. It happened at the Mount Morgan Apartments. The victim was then taken to a local hospital and then flown out to the University of Tennessee Hospital. Once Hill is caught, he will be charged with assault. State highway workers are hitting the roads around Lexington today to patch up all those potholes, the ones they can get to. During the day, they'll be focusing on major highways leading in and out of the city. And between 6 and midnight, they'll work on New Circle and both interstates. Pothole work will continue Monday through Friday until further notice. They have a lot of work to do. Oh, yes. Some of those are really deep. <laughs> they can swallow up you your car. It. Well, there's much more to come on WKYT News at 1230. You can take a punch against Parkinson's. Coming up, we'll tell you about a cutting-edge boxing program that helps people fight back against the disease. Plus, some laughs from our friend Anna May performing at Comedy Off-Broadway this week, and she's in the house. And we have some mixture of sun and clouds outside. Temperatures in the upper 40s, lower 50s at this moment. We'll finish off up to the 50s, lower 60s, but enjoy today because here comes the rain overnight. Show you how much you're expecting coming up.